Hello there and welcome to Forza Horizon 5, where we are in a little red Corvette and we are trying to hit a speed trap at 260 k's an hour, I believe. Unfortunately, we've got some tight corners leading up to it that while the objective is to go fast, <laughs> we do also need to dodge the traffic and get through the corner properly not run wide to hopefully get 260 by now perfect now that we know that it can go nice and fast it's time to see if we can make it fly for the other PR challenge distance is 220 I think looks good enough to me first try Right, now that we know that the Corvette can fly, it's time to see if it can race. We're on the Event Lab Island. The criteria for this was S1 Track Toys. And specifically, I wanted to use a Chevrolet. We're in the 2019 ZR1. Because the criteria for those PR challenges that we just did was S1 Chevrolet. So I like to double dip wherever I can. And this, while not the most recent of the vehicles, did have the highest stats for speed and such. So we've tuned it up to a decent amount. We've done some handling changes, though it was pretty good to start with. Came with semi-slick tires. We managed to do most performance upgrades that we wanted to do, other than the final stage on the supercharger. That was going to push it into S2. So it's got boatloads of power. And it seems pretty able to put them down. For a front engine rear wheel drive car, it's handling pretty nicely. Corvettes are always pretty good for that, really. These corners, this one's cambered. A lot of the rest haven't been. Could do with a little bit more, and preferably with a wall at the top to stop you flying off. I would call this track interesting, but kind of incomplete almost to be honest it feels like a work in progress but I can also understand getting to a certain point the amount of effort that it must go into constructing this entire environment of just going yeah you know what that'll do <laughs> the most I've ever done is just plop down routes in the existing game world not try and construct my own environment and then build a track from scratch on top of that. It's all using existing roads, so I don't have to think too much about that sort of stuff. That was a decent corner at least. And let's see if we can make it through the final corner without messing up too much. It's, it's cambered, but it's not quite as much as I would like. <laughs> it just makes the runoff very uneven. But that's enough. We've only got two laps to do on this one. Now every time that you return from Event Lab Island, you return to your residence, and for me this is Hostel Castillo. Now the photo challenge this week was looking for our friend Detective Tank again in Hostel Castillo apparently. He's hiding behind a railed off barriers. He's just looking for these bollards because he's behind a chain link fence. There we go. That'll do. There we go. Continuing on the little interlude between races, we've got our treasure hunt. Free as a bluebird. Let this cult car show off and have fun. Jump it five to times towards that sun. Ha. Ha 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 ha. Well, we've got our Datsun. And it's been tuned up for rallying, essentially, which is great. And it, the picture seems to show the volcano area. So I'm just going to jump it around a few times. Just kind of go over some of these crests here and there. Reckon jump it five times. That should be like three ear skills. Presumably that's what they're meaning. I don't know. Another one. There we go, yeah, <laughs> that was it, treasure challenge. 
And guess what? We're back in the stadium again, in their maze. Well, last time it was through the western entrance and just off to the right by the blue tower. Let's try the southern entrance and go off to the right towards the green tower. No, okay. <laughs> it was worth a shot. Oh, okay. I was just coming up here to then go into photo mode and scout around, but it's just up here on the platform, where I thought it would be last time. Alright. <laughs> on to the daily challenge now, and we need to have the 1971 Plymouth Cuda, which I didn't actually own, so I had to purchase it. It was just over 100,000 credits, not too bad. I also took the liberty of upgrading it to A-Class, because why not? Let's just make this thing rocket. Now, the first thing that we have to do with it is two hard charger skills. I've never quite figured out what that requires, but I always seem to get it when I start from a standstill and then just get to like 200Ks an hour or something. Because I get it a lot when I'm doing drag racing. <laughs> so let's just see if we can get a hard charger skill. There we go, hard charger skill. I guess it's to the point that you get a speed bonus. So we need two of those, so let's turn around and go back the other way. Rack up a few near misses on the motorway while I'm here. So about 250 was it? There you go, all the power complete. The skill dialogue hasn't caught up. But it knew that I'd achieved it. Excellent. Now what? Turns out the next thing we need to do is get 686 Ks an hour logged against speed traps. It's a very weird thing to have to do. There's a speed trap at the end here. I don't know it marked on my map at the moment, but there is a speed trap just down here. We were never likely to get 340 Ks an hour at all, so we're always going to have to do three runs through any speed trap. I think the top speed of this is only 320 or so, so even with all of my tuning, 340 would be out of the question. But that's another 215, so all we'll need to do is get to the top of the hill. There's another hard charger skill. Get to the top of the hill, turn around, and blast back down again and I think I only need to get maybe 150 if my maths is correct but we'll probably already be doing something in excess of 200 by the time we get down there so long as we don't hit on any traffic yeah already almost at 200 moment of truth 245 there we go that should be enough for the next step. And for our next trick, we need to win a street race. Unfortunately, I forgot this was the storm season. Uh, so we're in the wet against a bunch of other really powerful cars in a old school Plymouth that probably won't corner very well. I am not sure about this. I am up against off-road vehicles for some reason. That seems odd. <laughs> and potentially very unfair given the conditions um maybe i should swap the tires to off-road race tires <laughs> i thought i was doing a good thing by giving it semi slicks why do we have to be racing in a tropical storm i specifically chose this track because it's one that has a nice big long motorway section at the end as i know that cornering is not going to be the strong suit of this vehicle but, um, yeah. We've got some interesting opponents. It's a case of do I have the edge on them on speed. Is that a truck in the front? We are being beaten by just a flat out racing truck? Well, that's rude. I, I do really feel that the uh, opponent selection for street racing is very broken it just goes based on your category and that's pretty much it okay we overhauled him because he can't do corners funnily enough e even worse than we can this may be a bit of a tank but it's not a truck 
So that's a start. <laughs> Alright, somehow, against all odds, we have ended up in the lead. I, I don't know. But I'll take it. I mean, again, they do d kind of select your opponents based on category at least. So A800 is the max. Even if it can be across any discipline of car, if that makes sense. But it still ends up with some very strange results. It doesn't play by the normal racing rules of all of the other selections. I can barely hear the engine, and I know it's a noisy engine, over the rain. Wow, okay. Now this is the bit that I was looking forward to. Nice big long motorway section. We can just stretch it out and then we've just got to be mindful of the corners on the off ramp at the other end for the finish line. But we are well ahead. And I can barely see a thing <laughs> in this storm. This is not the sort of weather you should be doing 280 kilometers an hour in. That's for certain. <laughs> Drive to the conditions, everyone. Don't try this on the roads at home. Well, against my expectations from the start, we managed to win quite comfortably. Jolly good. <laughs> and that completes our weekly challenge, which gives us our first prize, the Subaru WRX 22. And because I went back and actually did more points, I basically cleared the board last week. Uh, we've actually already got halfway through the series, so that's great. We've got our Nissan Subaru. That's the car that you start with when you're in the Eliminator, I think. It, it's not very good, but sure, we'll take it. And from one classic American muscle car to another, we needed a decade 1960s B-Class for this. So we're in a 1969 Dodge Charger, because of course we are. Now this is a dirt race, interestingly, so I gave it off-road tires, but that bumped it into A rating. So I then had to add a rear splitter, which bumped it back down to exactly B700. And then I just tuned it so that the aerodynamic impact was basically nothing, or the lowest that I can. I mean, it might help me corner a little better, so there's that. If it gives me a little bit more grip, I'm all for that. We'll see how well we do. This sort of vehicle, not what I would normally envisage going around a dirt track however I mean Dukes of Hazard you know <laughs> country roads and American muscle cars I've got a nice high ride height so the water traps don't actually bother me as much as they might otherwise it looks like a stingray up ahead there was so many nice cars to choose from it must be said I initially picked this one because it was at B700 already, so I thought, oh, I've probably already tuned it. The only thing I'd given it was sport tires, and that's it. So I still tweaked it a little bit, but otherwise this engine and everything else is pretty much stock. And it's still probably the best car here. For this particular race. <laughs> Any other considerations are very subjective. Uh, it's it's definitely not the best car here for many other circumstances. So we've just got the one guy up ahead. Oh, there goes my clean racing. To try and overhaul. I wonder whether or not he has racing tyres or something as well. That's a very good looking classic. Very compact. Is that like a Cortina or something? I'm not sure what the years for some of the alternatives were. I didn't really look at the selection all that much. It was kind of, ooh, Charger. We are kind of reeling him in. We'll have to see whether or not we can keep it together through these sorts of corners. We can run a little bit wide on these. We're gonna get bogged down on this final water trap here, I think. Try and follow a good line through there. And then it's this this corner here and the road section that he seems to do quite well with. I think we're closer now than we were last lap. So hopefully if we can race the same, not mess up the corner up here as well, that would have made a difference. 
and hopefully we can catch up more through the dirt section than we did even last time and overhaul at some point before the finish yeah we're much closer to him getting started into this section this time see they're dabbing the brakes through some of these corners rookie strategy i am pinning it the entire way i have not even lifted off for that entire section after the first sharp corner to get onto the dirt it's just been full power all of the time <laughs> The water traps actually slow you down enough for getting through the next corners a lot of the time. It's quite handy. <laughs> like, they are a bit of a nuisance sometimes, but it's free breaks. <laughs> What's not to like? Unfortunately, this one doesn't come at the top of the hill before the sharp bend, so I am going to have to actually break up here. Probably too much, but I'd rather not go into the wall. Got decent acceleration out of there, and we've kept ahead. Perfect. That was a good one. I love it when it's competitive. From the jungle to the temples. Another pretty tight track. The Ford Escort that we were competing with last time. Yep, sure enough, he's already shot off to the lead. I realised I was about to cut the corner way too much and missed the checkpoint, so we had to drift back in line there. But we were catching up to the escort on the dirt section, like the twisty dirt track section of the final race, of the, the previous race rather. So given that that's most of this track, it, this one doesn't have a huge road section or anything. So we should be good to catch up. Yeah, this bit... Here is the only road section where we come down here, got to navigate this corner. So long as we do well through there. But now we go back onto loose surfaces. We're also cutting as much of the checkpoints as we can. Oop, almost a little drift tap there. Now this corner at the end here always catches me out whenever I race this track. There we go. I'm learning. Slowly, but surely. Now, remember to go wide and turn through this corner properly instead of trying to cut the corner and then having to make it much sharper than it needs to be. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly not one-sided. I suspect that if I was racing in the Ford Escort or even the Stingray, which I must say was very tempting, then I'd probably be screaming ahead. I, mean, I think I have a Ford Escort that is tuned up for rallying already. Kind of along the lines of the Datsun cult car that we were jumping around the volcano on earlier. But that's a 1970 vehicle. It just misses out from qualifying for this championship. Oh, okay, there's a fence there that I was hitting and that slows our car down a lot. That's a rookie mistake. It's hard to see some of those topographical features sometimes. Especially when you're in this view. It all just kind of blends in. That's alright. I've got another lap to catch up again. And there we go. It, on the inside in the end, but apparently an airborne pass as well. <laughs> I must have just got up onto two wheels or something through that stretch. That's funny. So, so long as we're decent through these, don't hit the fence up here again. Break here. He took a really bad... Okay, I took a bad line through that corner this time as well. Don't know. <laughs> I shouldn't cast shade. And I don't need to worry about what people in front of me are doing this time. Oh, did I miss that checkpoint? No. That... <laughs> that should have cost me. That, that felt cheeky. <laughs> Final race, and we're back in the jungle. Racing to the coast. This is a point-to-point. -point. I don't have three laps to hunt down my opponents across. I've got to chase them down within a little bit of a shorter time. 
So hopefully we'll have a good section that we can catch up on our Mr. Friend Ford Escort. But the saving grace, as always, is since we've won the first two quite handily, all we need to do championship-wise is come around third and our points will see us into the lead and we'll still take the points of the season. But signs are good that we won't need to worry about that because we've already caught up and this has a really nice long dirt section and we're already in front. It's a very stark contrast between the point to point dirt races in this versus Horizon 4. So I remember bemoaning in 4 that a lot of the point to points actually had really long road sections linking up the different dirt stretches. The circuits were often more exclusively off-road but the stretches in between on the sprints just seemed far too long and they ignored other dirt roads that did exist. Like this here we're on the road for a little bit because we're having to link up from that track back there just up around the corner here to the next one. That's perfectly acceptable. But if this was Forza Horizon 4, it would probably have just kept going straight there and ignored this. And then just gone up to the coast and then had another little bit of dirt or something. The balance was just a bit off. It helps of course in this, the map is so much bigger with a lot more dirt tracks to choose from. But it's not like they weren't there in the previous title either. Okay, tight corner at the end here. This is where I'm going to lose a little bit. Not that the car isn't particularly capable, but that the person holding the wheel could do better. But we'll get a lovely drift through there anyway. I'm trying to go to the edges of those water trap sections, because you don't go through as much water. But it's a bit of a gamble because sometimes it's actually deeper there so you bog down more so got to know the track to an extent as to whether or not it's best to go sideways or straight through the idea is that if you go straight through it's kind of a deeper rut has been worn by the other vehicles so it is deeper and more likely to bog you down but not always the case either way we stayed ahead the whole way pretty much and we'll take the championship handily. So we've been bouncing around the classic decades and American muscle cars for a while but it's now time to try and see if we can use just the same vehicle for the rest of our races starting with the one that I have the most optimism with. So this is the other event lab track. It's a very tight road circuit race with very annoying weather conditions and the category is A800 Super Saloons rather than using our Alfa Romeo again because <laughs> that would be a little bit on the nose we have tuned up slightly didn't need much encouragement a Mercedes-Benz uh, GT is it 2018 I think it's the one that certainly had, was the most encouraging for our purposes because there's two other categories that we're trying to make it fit into as well. Uh, there's a championship where the criteria is literally just Mercedes-Benz or Mercedes-AMG. Sorted. <laughs> and then the other seasonal championship criteria is cars over 100,000 credits. Which is very broad. <laughs> but this cost, uh, I think it's valued at about 250,000 so should qualify for that one as well. My concern there is I have no idea, Oop, I should be concerned about my quality of my driving as well turns out. My concern with that championship is what are my opponents going to be in? Because over a hundred thousand, I mean it's A800 still is the limit, but there's a lot of interesting vehicles that could show up. <laughs> so. We'll see how that one 
Okay, so we're gonna save that one to last in case I have to take a little bit of experimentation and jump between different cars. I have to say, I was hoping that this was only going to be two laps. <laughs> well, we're on the final lap now, anyway. I think you can cut that corner back there quite significantly as well. Okay, we avoided the wall that time. That's good. So we've learned <laughs> through this one. I have to say, I don't mind the track layout. They've done quite a good job of turning this into a bit of an urban landscape. With different roads going off, houses, condominiums. It's actually quite well put together. It could do with not being in the rain, but then, on the other hand, well, that's just a little bit more challenging, isn't it? I kind of appreciate it. My first impression was not great. Mainly just because of how narrow one of the earlier bits was. Yeah, these tunnel sections are quite narrow. So if you're having to overtake, it's quite tough. But as a track, it's actually quite good. Well done. I, I really like this one. This is much better than the Event Lab Island one from before. Okay, that's a tree that you can't crash through, but you can cut the corner if you time your turn and don't hit the tree. Good to know. <laughs> and across the line. On to the next championship. This is the one which is all Mercedes, Benz, and AMG vehicles, including a truck again. We've got the racing truck again. Okay, well I think I know who we're overtaking fairly quickly, but he is in the way, rather. I'm hoping that we'll be able to win this one fairly convincingly. And then we can go on to the final championship of the 100k plus cars. And uh, see what we're up against there. Okay, did that corner pretty badly, but so did he. That's handy. I'm honestly expecting that this championship overall, let alone just this race, this is a track that we've done quite a lot, and there's a fair few sections that the human player has a little bit of an advantage, it feels, over the AI in terms of the turns that they take and how they go through the bends. So, barring any unforeseen circumstances, this is probably going to be pretty straightforward. I'll be probably breaking a little bit more than I have to, to avoid crashing into corners, which means it's going to stay reasonably close, but, nope, Exhibit A, should have braked a little bit more there, forgot that it was wet. But I think this is going to become a fairly heavy, heavily edited affair <laughs> over the next few races. The amount of racing that we have to do with these weeks where there's three seasonal championships for points makes for a very long video. It's nice when it's more PR challenge heavy, it must be said. They can take a few attempts sometimes, but a lot of the time, so long as you get the car combinations right, they'll be one and done. And sure enough, once we got comfortable with the track and how the car is responding to it it's been pretty straightforward we'll see if we can set a best lap time i'm not optimistic i've been braking a little bit too much for a lot of these corners got through that one nice and cleanly though and across the line yeah new best time excellent oh, it started to rain now instead of it just being a bit greasy on the track for race two this is the very short sprint race Cloverleaf Sprint. Once again, we've got the racing truck right there. That does amuse me. I mean, if I was trying to really make this a challenge, then maybe I would have tried to race with that and win with it, but I think that would have been just a hiding to nothing. I'm not going to try and do that sort of thing. I'm just going to blatantly cut corners with this instead. You kind of have to when there's just so many cars to get past at the start. Since they constantly have you starting in eighth place which is so rude especially when you're leading the championship you've got so much flotsam to get your way through i'm just going to take it kind of easy to be honest through here this guy doesn't seem to corner all that well despite the massive spoiler 
so I'm not too worried. Yeah, you can take the line. There you go. I'm just going to push you around a little bit. Twist you around. They do that to me all the time, so I don't feel that bad about it. It's probably because their driving behavior is modeled off people like me, so I, it, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah, I wasn't joking when I said that this was a very short sprint race. I mean, it, it's less than two minutes start to finish. We're already there. If you're doing this in like an S2 road racing or track toy, it's a very fast track. Final race, and it's one we've seen a fair few times before around the little town loop. I think we've been doing the dirt version more often. This is the street circuit instead. Just pushing everyone around, just get out of my way. Let me get to the front. My patience is starting to wear thin with the amount of racing I've been having to do this morning. <laughs> Instead of going ahead there and up around the dirt section past our player house, we go through the town instead. And uh, put everyone's property at risk. Yeah, just take out the power. I do appreciate the changes in weather conditions and that they do really have an effect on the handling of your car and how you have to drive does definitely breathe a little bit of different life into the track when it's one that you've raced quite a lot before. Just like that, on to the final lap. Beat our first lap time down to 106. We'll see if we can keep it tidy on this one. A little bit of better corner through here maybe? No, still, still wide and slow, never mind. <laughs> Just cut the corners through here as well, why not? I'm fairly sure I've managed to keep my clean combo through the entire race. I've hit little bits on the sides like poles and cacti and things, but I don't think I've knocked a wall at all. Oof. He says knocking into a wall, but not hard enough to break my combo. My point still stands. For now. As always happens, I tempt fate and get slapped for it. Nope, not a better time that time. Still better than my first lap, not as good as my second. Right, on to the final seasonal championship now, and this is the one where the criteria was simply cars that cost more than 100,000 credits, and this Mercedes was something like 250,000. However, I didn't realise at the time that it's a cross-country championship, and we don't even have off-road tyres equipped at the moment, so this could be interesting. Thankfully, everyone else is in the same boat. The terms of engagement for any non-street race, essentially, is that everyone else will just be in the same category of vehicle as you are. So m maybe it works out. We've got four-wheel drive, so there's that. <laughs> if I give it off-road tires, maybe this is okay. It allows us to get easy wins against most of the field however we just get slowed down when we're going through that sort of brush the guy ahead of us also appears to be in a rally car of some description so that's harder to overhaul it's only really if everyone else is just in road cars <laughs> that we have the advantage We really can't turn very well. I'm not expecting to do well on this. I was hopeful to start with. We started quite well, and I was thinking, hey, maybe we can actually make this work. But I don't think it's going to be possible. Oh, this is the track as well. I just realized that we've got, one, a jump here, which is quite annoying, and two, we've got a water trap here. We won't really be able to turn through this. No, I mean, I struggle to do this part of this track, even in an off-road vehicle, so that's not great. I mean, we might come third. If we come third, we could keep going and not do... Okay, never mind. Never mind. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, we come third, and we have to win our next two races in whatever car we choose. But I don't think this is going to cut it. <laughs> 
I think it's time to pull out <laughs> this, our electric off-road racer. I saw someone else using one in the last race and reminded me that, yeah, that's probably a good shout. It's handy not having to change gears much, you know. It's... Being an electric vehicle, it's just one gear, full acceleration, I think it's just reverse is probably the only other gear. We've not caught up quite as much as I would have hoped immediately, but I think over the course of the rest of the race, uh, it was that or take like a rally vehicle, kind of like what that other guy's using, or uh, we could really have switched it up more. But it's interesting that the vehicles I'm racing against, I'm not sure what category this car actually is, whether it's like rally monster or off-road or what. Because that should be dictating my opponents. Unless they get set based on what you start the championship with. What lost me my combo there? <laughs> Whatever. We're just tearing up the fairway. Don't mind me. All of the bouncing. And that's the thing, is that it's all of the bounces across the rough surface that really kill it when you're in a car that doesn't have much ground clearance. Like our suspension on the... Mercedes was up a fair amount. It was like a 20 centimeter ride height or something, which is quite high, all things considered. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, okay, yep, that happened. That's why this has a really smooth top to it, I guess. <laughs> it's like a scarab beetle almost, this thing. That would be a better name for it. You really need something that isn't gonna just bottom out and stop when it comes off a jump of some sort because they love to have their jumps in cross-country races like this for example crunch hole in one and once again just skip our way up here the hardest part is just holding a good line <laughs> exhibit a um let's rewind that one yeah the hardest part is holding a good line. The car likes to twist when it lands and sometimes when it takes off. So because of the weird angles that you're often navigating, the car will want to just start twisting and then it'll just keep going in the air. And when you land, you don't know which way you're going to be facing sometimes. And it's really hard to predict. Like off one of the straight jumps, like one of these jumps down here, sure, predictable, because it's a artificial surface. When you're going off the crest of a hill that's on an angle, that's harder to predict what's going to happen and where you're going to go. <laughs> and that's part of the annoyance of racing the cross-country circuits. Yeah, like that, we just hopped sideways. And then this, yep, it, it twisted the wrong way, but we were able to pull it back, just. But so often that you'll go over a jump, and then you'll twist awkwardly and have to either avoid going off the track, or you just miss checkpoints. And then so many of the time as well, like that one, you go over a jump and then immediately have a tight corner that you've got to try and get around. So you've got to land and then break hard to be able to navigate the corner. In a higher rated vehicle, sometimes you'll just miss corners or checkpoints if you're not careful. You actually need to short your speed before the jump in order to get through. Oh, that was really messy, but thankfully we got a slid across the line. Okay, I'm starting to think that there is no restriction based on your car even for a cross-country race i thought there was i thought street races were the only exception but we're up against a truck again and otherwise it seems to be mostly saloon cars again unless it was set based on my initial vehicle and then they don't change but i have seen the ai change vehicles between races in the past so i don't think it's that now, we do have to specifically win this race as well, because we came third in the first one. 
Which is a shame because I don't like this track very much. <laughs> I generally don't do very well in it. And we've got a tropical storm on our hands. So currently we're being beaten by... Is that... It's, it's either a, like a Volvo Polestar or an Audi RS6, I'm not sure. Something along those lines. That's a very unlikely vehicle. Yeah, it is an Audi. Great car. Um, not what I would have chosen for this sort of conditions, but... Hey, it's doing alright for them. Oh, see, there, there's another example of where the car just likes to twist based on how you go off a jump. The water trap is not going to bother us, thankfully. Hopefully it'll trouble our opponents more. We can actually go higher on that corner back there, too. This we want to turn early. Oh, we are just sliding into the wall. That was not good. Do we rewind? Ah, it should be fine. This is only the second lap. I think we're all good. That slid a lot more than I expected. I guess the wet weather doesn't influence much when it comes to the sand. If anything, it probably helps. There's probably more traction with wet sand than if it's dry. I don't know if they factor that into the game at all, but... It might actually be better through this section, and maybe that's why it caught me out, because then you get up to the point that normally you have better grip on the final section before the finishing line. But I suspect it might actually be worse in these conditions than I'm used to. Part of the problem was just that how I hit the wall, so I just went into an awkward section that I was stuck in. If I just rebounded, it wouldn't be a problem, but let's actually dab the brakes a little bit more. There we go, that's fine. Yeah, we can we can take a little drift tap there. And then we've got plenty of momentum for this section. This one you want to start turning before the checkpoint, really, to be aiming down here. Now we actually have a little bit of road to follow, which is nice. Oop. Oh, not again. Not again. Uh-oh. 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 I think we rewind the... Yeah, we rewind that bit. <laughs> Did the same thing as the first lap. After learning our lesson on the second lap, we really didn't this time. We got too cocky again. Okay, let's take it back a little bit more. Because I actually need to be driving up here and then braking just before this crest. The problem was that I had already gone... Okay, that was terrible still, but good enough to still win. I'd already jumped before I tried turning, so... Well, with that madness over, we can claim our final prize, the Sierra 700R. I wonder if that's worth more than 100,000. That could have been a good candidate, eh? And we have finished with this particular season. Now, we're going to miss out on next season, which... On the one hand, that two jets thing looks interesting, but I'll probably never use it. Uh, it is legendary though, so it's always a, a bit of a shame to pass it up, but never mind. We'll be back for spring, and uh, we'll be driving the Jaguar E-Type, which I do own. I own several, so that's good. And we'll have the chance to win such vehicles as a Lancia Stratos if we do the trial, or a Jeep Trailcat that I have and hate, or a Dodge Charger 69, that seems familiar. I do honestly feel that they really needed to work in the whole backstage pass system that they used in Horizon 4, because then you got the choice to trade those in for reward cars that you may have missed out on on previous seasons. And to me, that's the best way of doing things, because otherwise, we keep getting prizes that we already have lots of multiples of, and when you win the prize, you don't get a chance to immediately like gift it or anything like that. If you win a duplicate off a wheel spin, it'll ask you whether or not you want to sell it or send it as a gift. If you win something from a championship or a race, you don't get that option. So it just sits there until eventually you go through your duplicates. Sometimes it's nice to have multiple of uh, the same car so you can tune them slightly differently. But let's be honest, I have like 666 cars already. I've got plenty to choose from. <laughs> But for now, that will be all. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time.